but common cardiac meds, these folks that are coming out of, out of uh, some type of myocardial infarction or event, they're almost always on the ABCs of cardiac meds. We've got the ACE inhibitors, the beta blockers, and the calcium channel blockers. The beta blockers, they end in alol. So if you look, look for the suffix alol, usually this is where you'll, almost categorically, you'll see those as beta blockers. The job of beta blockers is to block the beta adrenergic receptors, which reduces heart rate. That's the biggest thing of beta blockers is they reduce heart rate. Just a little quiz question. So if that's a beta blocker, a beta agonist, what would it do? A beta agonist would boost the heart rate. It would do the opposite. Something like uh, someone who has asthma and they take an albuterol inhaler, that's a beta agonist. However, here we're talking about alol. Now, my silly way to remember this, if you're going to play basketball, you have to have an olol, <laughs> or you have to have a ball to play basketball. Uh, basketball and then alol, probably super silly, but that's how I remember that the beta blockers end in alol. The ACE inhibitors, the ACE inhibitors, their primary job is to reduce blood pressure. As they reduce blood pressure, that reduces the, the afterload of the heart or the systemic vascular resistance, making it easier to pump. So by reducing blood pressure, they make the heart's job just a little bit easier and boosts cardiac output. Now, my silly way to remember this, that ACE inhibitors, they typically end in pril. Catapril, enalapril, ramapril, zinapril. So I just remember the word April or the month April. ACE inhibitors end in pril, April. And then finally, calcium channel blockers. These ones, they block calcium entry into the muscle tissue, but the biggest thing they do is they cause vasodilation of the coronary arteries, which reduces blood pressure. So you get vasodilation and a reduction of heart rate, kind of a double whammy here. So decrease heart rate, decrease blood pressure, vasodilation in the coronary arteries. Now these guys, not quite as easy to remember, amlodipine, Nifidipine, verapamil, diltiazem, these are all very common meds. I guess I just remember that, uh, we'll just say pine trees have a lot of calcium. Let's see, calcium, pine trees have a lot of calcium. Calcium is a two plus charge, calcium. Um, and you have to take pine trees to the mill. <laughs> I don't know. You have to take pine trees to the mill, turn them into wood. So amlodipine, nifidipine, verapamil, and then diltiazem is just weird, but... Those are the calcium channel blockers. Then other medications, at least two more, we gotta know. Angina pectoris is typically treated with nitrates, so nitroglycerin. So nitroglycerin, it's a strong vasodilator. So its job is to reduce the afterload of the, of the heart, so especially reducing blood pressure, but in a very acute way. So if you overdo it, you can get orthostatic hypotension, headaches, and dizziness. However, it can be very helpful if a person is experiencing an acute heart attack you open up the blood vessels and suddenly they can get better flow to the heart. So nitroglycerin, typically the protocol is, uh, obviously you're not prescribing the meds, but if they have their own meds, you say, hey, you're having symptoms, all right, it's time to bust out the nitro. Pull out the nitroglycerin, you take it sublingually, sublingually, meaning under the tongue, you suck on it for a moment, let it absorb directly into the bloodstream and monitor the symptoms for five minutes. You can repeat this procedure up to three times before calling 911 or while you're calling 911, depending on how severe the symptoms are. But the goal is to try to reduce the angina pectoris. And so certainly if there's no resolution of the angina pectoris, you'd send them, send them to the emergency department ASAP just because they are experiencing acute cardiac distress. Other medications you've got to know, certainly high on the list would be congestive heart failure. So congestive heart failure, uh, this is usually treated with the cardiac glycosides. So cardiac glycosides, we're talking about digitalis, digoxin. Now the thing about uh, digitalis, digoxin, the thing with these is they tend to create fewer but better beats. And so by fewer better beats, what I'm saying is that the person is simply going to have a reduced heart rate, but that reduced heart rate, they'll have better, um, a better ability to, to get the blood out. So it's it's an improvement in cardiac output, but without an increase in heart rate. So it's nice to have that increased contractility. So increasing the myocardial contraction force, that is the key here, increasing the myocardial contraction force. So you get fewer, fewer, but better, that's a W, not a fever, fewer, but better beats. And I just think of Dwight Schrute every time any of you who are office fans 
you'll know my reference here, but fewer but better beats. That's what happens when you have the cardiac glycosides on board. Now, unfortunately, if you have too many of them on board, you get gastrointestinal distress. Sometimes I see test questions about that. You can get arrhythmias, you can get atrioventricular blocks, PR interval lengthening. All of this would be pretty classic for the cardiac glycosides, including digitalis, digoxin, digitoxin. These are your common cardiac